When you're shearing a sheep and everything falls to place, it's a bit like a dance. It's really lovely, like the, um, the whole rhythm of it all. Rhythm aside, it's also sweaty, uncomfortable, back-breaking work. But Catherine Warnest and Chloe Sweets dig it. This is the hardest thing I've ever, ever done. But at the same time, it's probably the most rewarding. You learn so much about yourself. You learn how far you can go, how much strength you've got within. Not only are you moving like 80 kilos around, you know, every three minutes, you've got other things like heat. The wool might not comb. I remember my first couple of weeks, I just felt like I was Arnold Schwarzenegger. I thought my arms were out here. Like I was thinking like they must be. I'd go to bed and they'd just be, feel like they were bursting out of my skin. While women still only make up 3% of the quintessential Aussie profession, the tide of history is turning. 30 odd years ago when I started shearing, you would have just found blokes. I couldn't work in some sheds, um, mostly due to being a female, they didn't think that that was right. I always thought, well, I've got two arms and two legs, just the same as everybody else, so, you know, why can't I shift? New technology has helped, but Chloe says there's definitely still work to do. Some sheds still don't have toilets, some sheds still don't have fridges, and it needs to change. Like shearing, roughly 3% of truckies are women. And that's something Lyndall Denny is trying to change. There, there is a lot of work that needs to be done to attract women to the industry in the first place. Then we need to encourage recruiters to give these women a go. Lyndall swapped her desk job for the cab of a big rig after years campaigning against aggressive truck drivers. Like so many people, I thought all the drivers in the industry were rednecks. But once I was welcomed with open arms by the truck drivers, I decided that I just loved the industry and that we really needed to do something to get more women out there uh, behind the wheel, out where the rubber hits the road. Linda was 54 when she traded her stilettos for steel caps. Yes, you get your hands dirty and yes, you're always hurting yourself. And I think um, my 30 years working in an office, the worst injury I had was a paper cut. But there are so many things that I love about the job. I'm working alone, um, the, the scenery, the people I meet, the growth, the personal growth. Perhaps the worst part for me would be in clement weather uh, because, you know, if it's raining, my makeup might get ruined. Lingle says she's noticed a big cultural shift within the industry over the past five years. Women are now recognised as the vital untapped resource, given that they're on the brink of massive driver shortages. Women are still hitting the glass ceiling when it comes to leadership positions. But Justice Julie Ward isn't one of them. The opportunities for women at senior levels in the legal profession now are greater than they ever have been. I think the hard work was done by those pioneering women that came before me. The mother of two scored her dream job when she was sworn in as a judge of the Supreme Court of New South Wales 11 years ago. I enjoy the variety, I enjoy the intellectual stimulation, I love the courtroom drama, the days of the boys club culture and systemic discrimination against women have long since gone, but obviously there will be pockets of it. The majority of law graduates are women, but they're a minority higher up the chain. So what can young women take from these fabulous trailblazers? At the end of the day, shearing comes from your head and your heart. It, and if you're capable of doing the job, um, then so be it. Develop relationships with mentors and role models within the profession. Work hard, get on with things, and make sure that they have a very good pair of shoes in which to do it. Women are hesitant to come into the industry because they buy into these stereotypes that they hear. They're not strong enough, they're not mechanically minded, they can't follow directions. You don't need a, a mechanical toolkit, you don't need to be built like a gorilla to drive a truck these days. Once you start, just never give up. <laughs> Shearing would be hard. Well, I was reading today that in the olden days they used to say, all the blokes would say, ducks on the pond when a woman would enter the shearing shed and that was a warning to watch your language, there's a, uh, there's a girl uh, in, the, in the shed. And now yeah. it's like, nah, mate. Yeah, do, can... do you reckon she swears with the best of them? I'm sure she does. <laughs> <laughs> in the law there's a lot more women at the upper level. Now my daughter's doing a law degree, so 
I mean, I'm sure she'll get a job when she finishes it, I hope. But how often do you hear that they don't, can't go right to the top, and that's in many industries, and all the, the limiting factors that mean that's not happening, whether it be the hours, flexibility, the, you know, women being seen as being able to do the top jobs? Yeah, especially in law firms, I reckon. I reckon with judges it might be different because they're government appointed. Yeah. So depending on the government, sometimes governments decide they really want to make sure their hour women represented on the bench, but in law corporate firms? law firms, I reckon that's where it gets harder, yeah. So the majority of partners are still men? Uh, well, I don't know off the top of my head, but I'd be staggered if that wasn't the case. In fact, I know of someone who um, tried to introduce gender equity into a law firm, and I think that included pay and all kinds of things, and they had to turn around to male partners and say, sorry, you're losing 300 grand a year, yeah, just to make sure that women were... Well. Wow. It shows how underpaid they yeah. were relatively.